1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Yes. Yes, that's right, ladies and gentlemen. I can count to 10 in Italian. Yeah. Wow. I'm pretty sure yeah. you just got me pregnant. Oh, it must be these strong Italian eyebrows that I got. You know what I mean? Dude, plucking my eyebrows is like going to war. Every time you pull an eyebrow, it's it's hell. It's brutal, mm -hmm. man. Being Italian is not all it's cracked up to be, let me tell you. Mamma mia. Um, all right, guys, what is going on? Up today, you saw the thumbnail. We are talking about Pixar's newest and latest. We are talking about Luca. Um, if you guys have not yet seen Luca, jump over to Disney+. Plus. It's included in Disney+, Plus, which is a point to bring up. They of course, learned. we did not have to pay the $30. Um, you're like, what? I paid $60 for this. <laughs> Damn scalpers. Um, Luca included in Disney Plus. Go watch it. Come on back, because of course we're gonna have some spoilers in here. Um, Chris, I want you to start us off with this one because I actually think, based on some Instagram conversations that we've had with people in comment sections, I think we have a little bit differing opinions on this yeah. movie, and I'm interested to see kind of how that comes in. Maybe not. Maybe they're not as different as we think they are. But uh, start us off, man. What do you think of Luca? Initial reactions. So, the movie itself is very innocent very childlike it's all supposed to be reminiscent of like summer vacations that we take as kids that's really the the whole theme of the movie is is that innocence and i mean obviously there's the there's the theme of like accepting yourself and and you know the, of being the other being different um there's you can play that into all sorts of things whether that's uh sexual identity or orientation yep. or yep. uh race you know you can take that a, a lot of different ways um ultimately i think this movie is just about that childhood innocence um and and i i wrote about it in our blog post for this i really i liked how affectionate the movie felt you know like uh, uh luca and alberto um, yep, you know, like they put their hands around each other. Like it, it's it before any of that. Like, oh, this is gay. You know, any of those thoughts cross your mind. But you know, as society teaches you that, you know, like these are just two kids who share a bond, and you know, you see them hugging and stuff. And like, I love that. Um, and uh, I, I don't know, man. It, to me, it was just it was a cute movie with some good um, messages. The 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 obviously the animation is absolutely phenomenal. I like the music. Um, but you know, the plot isn't anything like phenomenal. Like it's about a bike race, you know, there's the conflict is, is internal. It's not, it's not, it, there's no bad guy. I mean, I guess that, uh, Ercule guy is kind of a bad guy. He's just a dick really is more than anything. Right. right. Um, you know, so like the film itself doesn't get as heavy as like finding Nemo or any of that. It's definitely not Pixar's best, but I don't think it's their worst. It's just, it's a kind of a slice of life animation about a weird family and and that's that's really um you know i'm not i'm not saying that it's the most amazing film i've ever seen but i thought it was cute wow well said that's hard to follow up um i <laughs> and we're done here and we're done i can't really i can't really top that i agree with you i agree with you i i I had a bigger problem with the fact that the story turned into being about a bike race than I think you I did. Do. I and do I, I think I I expected a little bit more depth to the plot of this movie. But I think what you said rings true. The conflict is internal. I think there's more message in this movie than there than you know, beneath the surface, no pun intended, than there is on the surface. And I think <laughs> of the water, eh, I see. Right, right, because of the mermaid. And and I think that um I think there is something to be considered there, but I do feel like because the plot ended up being so inconsequential, in my opinion, it made the thing feel like a really kids movie. Like mm -hmm. we're coming off of Soul, which very much True. felt like an adult movie. Like that was not typical for Pixar. That felt very mature for a totally yeah. different demographic than what you would think. This one really, I think the pendulum swung back almost too far the other way for me just personal opinion not that it was a bad movie I, for the right audience i think it was a great movie mm -hmm. i think that maybe i had a harder time reading underneath to kind of the message and i think that i because the movie ended up being about them wanting to ride a vespa you know the whole thing is so they can get a scooter and you know they're doing a bike race in a town 
I, I mean, it's it's Pixar, so you you go into this knowing the animation is going to be phenomenal. True. Speaking of animation, this felt like a little bit different style to oh, me. Absolutely. The, the, oh, absolutely, absolutely. The style. people, like the people, looked different. They mm-hmm. almost looked a little bit more two D to me, like two dimensional claymation kind of style stuff. Yeah, it was weird. Like I don't. I didn't care for it the as much. round, the round bottom jaw and the big eyes. Exactly, like yeah. the, like kind of flat looking faces and stuff. I didn't care for the animation quite as much in this, and I, I, I didn't like I the style like either. And I think we said it when we saw the trailer. Yeah, I I think we did also. Yeah, that's right because we did a trailer review. That's right, we did a tutor review on this one, and we even talked about how the animation was kind of weird. Um, I liked part. I mean, I liked that the dad had one arm. That was an interesting kind of thing, and yes. it made a cool character. I loved the cat with the mustache. I thought that was adorable and hilarious. But I do feel like this one very much felt like kind of a felt like this one lacked substance a little bit for me. I can see, but that, I yeah. will agree. I will agree with you that I think maybe there was a little bit more underneath the surface on this one, and, and it takes a little bit more of a critical analysis as an adult. To watch this one. I think they did a good job where if you're a kid coming in to watch this, you would probably enjoy it because it's mm-hmm. a good kids movie. But you may not realize the message that's going on beneath the surface on this thing. So yeah. I'll give credit where credit's due. I can appreciate that. I just I just didn't feel as invested in this one as I thought I was going to because I didn't think that they were ever in any real significant danger. And I didn't feel like what they were going for was all that much because they're trying to get a scooter. You know, of all yeah. these Pixar movies that we've seen with big risks and and adventure and whatnot these guys are trying to win a a shitty vespa you know and uh, i don't know i don't know not pixar's best uh, um but but i can appreciate the quality of this movie and i do think that it was enjoyable i i i enjoyed the whole thing certainly i just i i knew coming out of this that you really liked it and i thought that uh i i realized after watching it for one reason or another i didn't really i wasn't that impacted i wasn't that impacted by luca i guess it's not that I, I like I really liked it or anything. I think it's more that I I appreciate that it made me feel like a kid again. I I I, Fair. I can appreciate that it. Um, I, I don't know it, it, the air to it. The the whole aura of the film just gave off that childhood feel. Like I I felt like I could feel the summer in the movie, yeah. and I could uh, yeah. you know seeing him kind of daydream in and out and and think about things reminds me of the, the same daydreams that I used to have and stuff. Just, um, I don't know. I, I think I, I was just able to relate to it, um, but I'm not, I think my my score will surprise you. Um, yeah. I just, I just really liked the style and the vibe to the whole thing, and I liked that it was childlike and that it didn't take itself too seriously. But when you're comparing it to films like Up or, or you know, right. like, you know, some of the more, you know, like even Toy Story, you know, or... Pixar has a lot of heavier films, and so when you compare it to that, these films that have more substance and more weight to them and emotionally connect with you more, of course, things you know like Luca is not going to hold up. But um, I don't think that necessarily means it's a bad film. It's just it's a different type of conflict. I will say, you know, not trying to be Mr. Tough Guy here, almost every Pixar movie has either almost or legitimately made me tear up and cry. I didn't get that from this one i'm trying yeah, to remember like the it. emotional climax of this one like when when the kid you know when when alberto um becomes the sea monster and he's caught in the net and then luca comes back to help him and stuff i didn't quite get the emotional response that i was hoping for in this one and a lot of pixar movies will really get to me they didn't really sell the village as being this like murderous no, they did. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, so there didn't. was there was no sense of urgency to any of it, really. And and again, and it I, just it felt like a summer laziness. You know, like there was no real danger. Well, and I felt like the village also went from being we're gonna kill yes. the first sea monster we see to we love these kids and they're part of our family. And really I agree. Fast. I I think that is a big negative. I think the the development of the of the character arcs of like the village being a character. That its development was it was like this, and it just suddenly yeah agreed. it was bizarre. Agreed. Yeah. Uh, I didn't think I I don't know I didn't think it was the best. I didn't think it was the best, and it was even like like so for example I know now because I did some research and stuff, but like can you explain to me Luca's job as a sea monster? Like, do you know what he was doing? He was herding those weird what they fish. 
Right. He was like a shepherd for these like goat fish or whatever they were Not called. Not a very good like, one, but yeah. But like why? What, what I, I don't I don't know. I just I didn't I don't know, man. I had a hard time connecting with this movie and to I see milk how you the, the fish. I mean, I guess they didn't show them doing that or anything. He it's was true. just keeping all these fish in line. I didn't really get it. It's like, well, why? What are you getting from these fish? The character, his like <laughs> the uncle, heavy who questions. was the right, the the weird angler fish guy, was hilarious. That guy was really funny. Also, I don't know if you I, right. was it a post credit scene or was it just right at the end of the movie where he came on and was talking and he's like talking to the fish? Did you see that? That may have been a post credit scene. No, I didn't. If you missed man, that, I gotta it's stick worth around going after the credits. Yeah, especially for Pixar, man. You know they're going to give you something. Um, it's worth going and looking up on YouTube. It's pretty funny. It's him, like, just talking to one of those fish. And, like, you know, he says he talks a lot. It's just the fish is, like, kind of freaked out. I don't know, man. I just um, I didn't really feel like the stakes in this one were there. I didn't. Okay. Innocence is definitely the, the theme here. But I felt like the pendulum went one way so far with Soul, a little too far that way, where it was too mature for a Pixar movie. Mm-hmm. And then all of a sudden it was all the way back the other way to this, which just felt very inconsequential and i'd like to see him get back in the middle with something like coco where there's like real danger it's a good audience everybody's gonna love it but it also glad like, you brought that absolutely up. can can pull at your heartstrings and stuff so uh, a couple things i think one thing um uh and coming back to coco in a second one thing is that this film because of that innocence and that like fluffiness that pretty much the entire film has this level of of just airy everything is okay Right. Um, it, it reminds me a lot of Studio Ghibli, Studio Ghibli, whatever. Um, yeah. And um, and I think that's kind of why I liked it because it felt like – I know it probably wasn't. Maybe there was a level of, of influence there between that director and the other. But um, it definitely felt like almost an homage to it even though it wasn't um, or not intentional. But it, it, it gave off that vibe of, of just, a, again, a slice of life animation – um, and I think we expect more from Pixar, which is totally, totally fine. I mean, Pixar has made a name for themselves. And I think this was just a different yeah. type of director. It's their first director. that th- This guy has not directed any other movies for them. He's worked on a few others, but this is his first director thing. Um, and so I think he was just trying something yeah. out. Um, that but, That's a good point about the directors, though, because that's a little bit of a scary thing for me with Pixar. And I guess it shouldn't be because we've gotten good Pixar movies since, but... With um, is it John Lasseter? Who's the Pixar guy? Like the head of Pixar who yeah, stepped John down Lasseter. recently. Dude, the movies since his since his dismissal, I don't think have been as good. Like I did not like Toy Story four or five mm-hmm. or whichever the last one was that we got. I didn't really think Soul was all that great either. I mean, don't get me wrong. I'm not taking anything away from the quality of these animations. Yeah, That's yeah. always been there. That's never faltered. But I don't think the stories are as good. I, I don't agree. know that I've liked the stories as much. And now here we are with with Luca, which. To be fair, even after watching the trailer, I, didn't, I never really had the highest expectations for Luca, but I, I worry a little bit about Pixar moving forward because I don't know if we're going to get the Pixar that we used to have. I don't know. I don't know. I think there will be, just like with Disney, there will be a renaissance. Okay. You know, Disney fell into this plateau. It always happens because once you develop a template that works, why would you change it if you're bringing money into the company? Like at, at some point, point you have to see it. Um, and, and when with John Lasseter, you know, like he helped found the company. And so he had his heart set in this. But since he's removed, all the company's new CEO is going to think about is how do I make this profitable? How do I make this partnership yeah. last with Disney yeah. and, and make sure that these people have jobs and that we continue to put good content out? Um, and that's ultimately what this is. It's like this isn't great. It's not a great movie. It's good. It's cool. It's whatever. But right. um, I will say that one of the things that I feel that added to the to some of the better films is, is like Coco, like what you were saying. Dude, the entire cast was culturally diverse. And this is an, a movie about an Italian coast with pretty much no Italian casting. Yeah, um, isn't that weird? That is it's weird. It's bizarre. In in borderline kind of racist, like you know, like we're we're like Disney's all about trying to be politically correct yeah. and hiring the right people and stuff, and then yeah, they just hire whatever you know white person they can for this, and it's it's a good point, man. I just touch so touching base on what we were talking about with with what you were saying. There's going to be a renaissance. That that is again very well said. I think that's that's very true. I hope that not to get too like businessy about this, but I hope that Bob Chapek, who's just stepped in as CEO for Disney. I hope that he does a good job of 
building on the diversification that Bob Iger did, but mm-hmm. doubling down on the like the quality now that we have. So Bob yes. Bob Iger got his fingers into everything. Bob Iger diversified Disney to this vast mega company. It's unbelievable. This is Bob but Iger's now that fingers. he's right now that he's got all these different umbrellas, you know, spread out and everything. I hope that Bob Chapek can step in and say, okay. We've spread out Marvel to all these different movies. We've spread out uh, Star Wars to all these different things. Now let's double down on the quality of all of these things. It's so diverse. Let's not get to this Netflix business model where we're just putting out more things. Let's not let Pixar say, oh, we have to put out a movie every six months, but it's not going to be good. Step away from that. Take a little bit longer, or don't if you can do it in a short amount of time, and double down on the quality of these things and actually get input from people who... Get input from your demographic as well. Yep. What do people want to see? Genuinely, what do people want to see? Don't just listen to the people making a lot of noise on Twitter or whatever. You know, what has worked in the past? And then let's keep going for that. And let's, you know, try to double down on being creative on the, the Toy Story 5 that and we 6. Have. Yeah, let's I don't do think that. we need any more Toy Stories, dude. I, I think, think we, we need, need to wrap it up with another six films. Just finish the story <laughs> off strong. <laughs> the final know? trilogy. Another yeah. six would really wrap it up. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I don't know, man. I mean, so Luca was received well. It's a Pixar movie, so they're always received well. But not, you know, there's movies like Coco that just, I actually, I, you know, that'd be a good thing to do. Stand by, Spanish flea. And we're back. Okay, so I wanted to look this up real quick. So some Pixar movies, the ones that genuinely we think are the best, like Coco. Coco has a 97% audience score and a 94, sorry, 97% critic score, 94% audience score. Luca, by example has a 90% critic score and an 88% audience score. And I know that's not a huge difference, but I do think that when you start going down into the 80s, it's a little bit telling, especially for Pixar, whose quality is supposed to be up in the 90, 95, you know, Rotten Tomato scores always. When you start dropping down into the 80s, even the high 80s, I do think that's a little bit telling. I think that there's enough people out there who have said this was not the best to at least recognize that, and I think Pixar probably will. Um, but where do your ratings come in for Luca as compared to a 90 and an 88? Um, close, not that high. Um, I I'm sur- I didn't look at any of the ratings, so I'm kind of surprised to see critics. Um, I'm sure they're probably saying some of the same stuff I am. Um, yeah. Um, so, you know, same touching on themes and the childhood and all that. Um, but see, all of that, that is just something that I've learned to analyze because I've had to dig deep into films for so many years now. Um when you when when you laid it out the way you did, I see why, and 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 it's weird kind of balancing the two scores because on one hand I'm like no this was this was really good, and on the other hand I'm like was it though? Um, I'm gonna go in with an eight. Yeah, I think, and it's a low eight. It I was leaning towards a seven and a half, but I think the film t- does a good job. It is an artistic representation of this guy's childhood memories, and I think that he has openly said that. He it reminds him of his own summers away, and I, I I'm pretty sure he spent summers in Italy. So, right, but we don't care. We don't care and, about that. And 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 that's I, the I, thing I didn't is spend like, my summers in Italy. You know what I mean? Yeah, but I mean, you you still have the artistic intent there. You know, like the authorial yeah. intent. You know, so like, yeah. no director is going to ever make a movie, whether it's about superheroes or whatever, without putting a piece of themselves into it. So this is just, it, you know, it's just not your cup of tea, you know, because it, it isn't, it is more of a, of, of a, a piece of this person's life just kind of laid out bare right. with a little twist. Right. For the most people, you're right. Yeah. I mean, most people aren't really going to care about that because there isn't a lot to it. And the, the, the plot isn't, filled with you know uh, high stakes and anything like that but i think if you just turn your brain off um and and give the movie a chance i think it it's better i i will say i, I went in thinking i was gonna hate it and i didn't so yeah um i'm glad i'm, I'm, I'm just glad you liked it strong yeah, i'm glad you liked it eight yeah eight. i'm good yeah. i'm good with that i uh, i'm gonna be lower than that honestly i think you know it's I think it's hard. We start feeling that bias. Like, I feel like because it's Pixar, I have to give this thing a 9 out of 10 or something. And I start to feel like I'm going to get criticized pretty badly if I don't. But we've always been genuine on this podcast. It's just the truth. If, if you want someone to just tell you it's a 10 out of 10, go look at, you know, the Disney.com review or whatever. Um, I'm actually going to come in with a 7. Uh, you know, and no lower than a 7. No lower than a 7. Definitely a solid That's a 7 strong on this score. One. I thought you were going to give it a worse score. 
I I mean, it's there's a lot to like. It was creative. It was a little different. It uh, you know I like some of the the content in there. I think I think if I was gonna come in lower than a seven, it would be a little bit harsh. I mean, maybe I toy with the idea <laughs> of like, a six and a half on four. this one. Yeah, I don't know. I toy with the idea of a six and a half on this one, but I don't know if that's necessarily fair. Um, just not. A, I don't think I'm necessarily the demographic for this. I had mm-hmm. high hopes. It was a little bit flat for me. Didn't feel like the stakes were there. Um, and I think, uh, you know, it's a Pixar, so the quality is always there. And I think specifically rating this as a Pixar animated film, um, where movies like Coco get nines, nine and a halves, I think this one's seven. I think this one's a solid seven. And, and maybe you could come in and say six and a half even for this, just because I didn't get as invested to it as I wanted to. But I think I'm going to go with a seven and be pretty, pretty set on that. Pretty set on that. So that's okay. it, man. A seven and an eight. I'm, um, I'm pretty, pretty confident in those scores. You got anything else for Luca before we jump into our current event for today? Nope. So real quick current event. Um, actually, before we do, guys, leave a comment down below. Let us know what you thought of Luca. Um, always drop a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Fair is fair. We always appreciate it. Go to and, our uh, if you like what you. Oh, we yes. Got a, we got Critic a blog and post the for this Yeah, check out the blog post that Chris does for this. It's really interesting reading. Chris, give yourself a pat on the back, man. You uh, you do a great job on those blog posts. But, yes, so so jumping into our current event for today, man, um, I thought just kind of sticking to the Disney Pixar theme, there was a list released pretty recently about all of the upcoming live-action princess movies that we can expect. Um, just so you guys know, um, they're getting a Little Mermaid live-action movie coming up. We're getting a Snow White live-action movie coming up. We're getting Aladdin 2, and which is not like a princess movie, but Princess Jasmine is in it. They're doing Snow White. Um, they're doing Little Mermaid, Snow White, Aladdin 2, and we're getting an Enchanted 2, which we've talked about in previous current events. So any fans of the you know Disney princesses or the live-action movies for that, uh, be on the lookout because those movies are in the works. That's the ballsy, pipeline. man. Snow White is the original. That's the one that started it. That's, That's right. They, be- they better do that one justice. Pretty big standards. Mm-hmm. I know. Pretty big standards. I mean, but that's the thing, dude. Does anybody care? Like, does anybody... I mean, not Die care. Hard Disney fans I, will. The Die Hard Disney fans will. You're right. There's You're a right. big culture it has that, to be, but... Yeah, it has to be good. You're right. Of all of them, Snow White has to be good. That's a good point, being the first one. Uh, leave a comment down below, guys. Let us know what you think of that. Uh, if you have any any input on that at all, these, these new Disney movies that are coming out, obviously. Um, people love or hate these live actions. I lean a little more towards the hate, regardless of what company is making them. Um, although I will say the Aladdin was really good, and mm-hmm. I look forward to a sequel for that. They can be done well. They can be done well. But that's it. Chris, you got anything else for Luca or our current event for today before we jump out of here? Speaking of Luca, did you know that like at one point, I think it was in the 90s, they recorded a sound underwater that was like 10 times, like it was like the loudest thing that they'd ever recorded. It's called the bloop. You can Google it. But they recorded this sound and nobody to this day, they have no idea what the hell made it. But it was this like loud sound that just came from like the depth of the ocean. It's It's kind of terrifying. Cthulhu. Right? Cthulhu, dude. Cthulhu. Cthulhu, Cthulhu, whatever it is. He's out there just making bloops left and right. It makes you wonder how many bloops are not getting recorded right now, right. you know? People are blooping it up down there. All right, everybody. Critic in the Common Man, that was our review of Luca. We appreciate the love. Drop a thumbs up. Smash it or a thumbs down. You can smash that, too, if you hate us. Um, but we always appreciate the love. Other than that, we are out of here, and we'll see you in the next episode. So long, everybody. <laughs>